let's continue with the properties of square and square root yesterday we have seen five properties of square and square root today we will go with the sixth property what sixth property is a triplet x y z of three natural numbers x y and z is called a pythagorean triplet if x square plus y square is equals to z square student in your 7th standard you have learned about the triangle and its properties in that chapter we have learned about the right angle triangle right angle triangle uh, triangle whose one of the angle is 90 degree and the side opposite to 90 degree is called as the hypotenuse which is the longest side of the triangle and remaining two sides remaining two sides are the two legs of your triangle one is called as the base and other will called as the height so we have seen pythagoras theorem what is pythagorean uh, pythagoras theorem said us that square of the hypotenuse is equals to sum of the square of other two legs other two legs it means base and height so pythagoras theorem told us that square of hypotenuse is equals to square of base plus square of height with suppose that ki your hypotenuse is your z base will be your x and height is your y so square of the base square of the height is equals to the square of the hypotenuse that is z square is equals to x square plus y square this is called as the pythagorean theorem pythagoras theorem and this x y z this x y and z is called as the pythagorean triplet it is called as the pythagorean triplet so let us see with one example we have seen whether in 7th standard also how to prove a pythagorean triplet the same way suppose we have 6 8 and 10 three natural numbers and we have to check whether this is a pythagorean triplet or not so what we will do we will prove that the square of the hypotenuse is equals to base square plus height square now from the number how can you understand which will be base height or the hypotenuse so the longest side is called as the hypotenuse so the biggest number will be a hypotenuse so find out the square of the biggest number that is the square of 10 that is equals to 100 then you have to find out the sum of the square of remaining two numbers what is remaining here 6 and 8 square of 6 that is equals to 36 square of 8 that is equals to 64 which is equals to 100 so as this 100 100 comes it means square of 100 is equals to square of 6 plus square of 8 it means that 6 8 and 10 are called as the pythagorean triplet so with the help of this we can derive a formula to find out the pythagorean triplet member uh, suppose that for any natural number n greater than 1 then the pythagorean triplet will be 2m m square minus 1 and m square plus 1 these are the three natural numbers by which we can make the pythagorean triplet if suppose you know one of the member of the pythagorean triplet and you have to find out the rest this property says us the square of a natural number m is equal to the sum of the first m odd numbers repeating again the square of a natural number m is equal to the sum of the first m odd numbers it means that if m is a square of nat natural number m m you can take any number suppose m is equals to i am taking here 4 so when i am finding out the square of this natural number 4 then 
its square will be equals to the sum of first four odd numbers. Now what are the first four odd numbers? 1, 3, then 5 and then 7. Now what is square of 4? That is equals to 16. Let's add them. 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 5, 15 and 1, 16. Okay, here it comes. So, that is said that ki square of a natural number, whatever that natural number, that much odd number sum will be gives you the square of that number. Suppose I am taking the example square of 6. That you know 36. Now we can find out with the sum of odd numbers. 6, it means 6 odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, the next odd number, 9, 11. How much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's add it. 11 plus 9, that will be 20. 7 plus 3, 10, that will be 30. 35 and 1, that is equals to 36. So in this way, when we are adding the, suppose I am adding 7 odd numbers. I am adding 7 odd numbers. Suppose 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and 13. I am adding how many odd numbers? 7. It means it is equal to the square of 7 which is equal to 49. Sum up it. You will get 49. Okay. This is your 7th property. Then we will go with this property number 8. What this property tells us? We can express the square of any odd number as the square of two consecutive positive integers. I am repeating once again. We can express the square of any odd number. Square of any odd number, not even number. Okay. As the sum of two consecutive positive integer. Now it is consecutive positive integer. It can be odd. It can be even. Anywhere. The odd. Odd number. It means we can find out. Let's the square of 5. Square of 5. It is 25. It can be written as 12 plus 13. These are the two consecutive positive integer. Sum of these two consecutive positive integer is equal to the square of odd number, not even number. Okay. Suppose square of 7. Square of 7 is equal to 49. This 49 can be written as 24 plus 25. We will get 49. So, these are the two consecutive positive integer sum. So, it's only odd. It is not true for even. If I want to find out even, suppose 6 square equals to 36. So, it is not possible. May be possible or may not be possible. So, key we can write 36 at the sum of two consecutive positive integers. If you want to write, you can write 32 plus 4. But that is not a consecutive positive integer. Consecutive, it means one after one. One after one. So, this is not true for even number it is only can be expressed for the square of any odd numbers now move ahead with the next property of square and square roots what this property tells us for any natural number n greater than 1 greater than 1 n plus 1 in bracket multiply by n minus 1 is equal to n square minus 1. Using this property we can find the product of two consecutive even or odd natural numbers easily. Now how to find out that? Let us see with the help of some example. Suppose we have to find out the product of 7 and 8. 7 8 8 are the consecutive natural number. Are the Consecutive natural number, sorry, 7 and 8, instead of 8, we have to take 9, 7 and 9, 
okay if you have to find out this product of 7 and 9 we will go with the property that n plus 1 and n minus 1 is equals to n square minus 1. It means we have to make two bracket for 7 and 9 that n will be a common one. So between 7 and 9 there is 8. So we will go with the plus bracket by 8 and minus bracket by 8. If I will go plus bracket by 8, 8 plus 1 I will get 9. And I will go minus bracket then 8 minus 1 that is equals to 7. So we will got in the form of n plus 1 that is 8 plus 1. n minus 1 that is 8 minus 1. Now we know it will be equals to the n square. What is n here our? Our n is here 8. So 8 square minus 1. What is the square of 8? Square of 8 is equals to 64. 64 minus 1 which is equals to 63. So we can go with the next example. Suppose I am taking an example of 12 and 14. Okay product of 12 and 14. Now between 12 and 14 there is 13. So we will go with the bracket of 13 plus 1. 13 minus 1. It means square of 13 minus 1. Square of 13 is equals to. Square of 13 is equals to 169. 169 minus 1 which is equals to 168. So in this way you can find out for any of the number which are greater than 1. In such a way that we can use a formula n plus 1 n minus 1 is equals to n square minus 1. Now the last property that is the tenth property of your square and square roots. Let's see keep what this property explains us. Now for explaining this property first you have to observe the following. What is given here square of 1 is 1. Square of 2 equals to 4. Now in between 1 and 4 as I explained in your first video also. This square of 1 is 1 and square of 2 is 4. I told you that between 1 and 4, there are the numbers which are that number 2, 3. Okay. But 1 and 4 are the perfect square numbers. Whereas 2 and 3 are non-perfect square numbers. The same way, suppose I will find out the square of 2, that is 4. Square of 3, that is 9. So between 4 and 9, 4 and 9 are the perfect square numbers. Now between 4 and 9, how many non-perfect square numbers are there? How many non-perfect square numbers are there? So you will count then you will find that 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay, these are the non-perfect square numbers between these two perfect square numbers 4 and 9. So when you will see this, uh, suppose I will go with some more example for you. 5 square that is equals to 25. 6 square that is equals to 36. Now between 25 and 36, how many non-perfect square numbers? So we will see the pattern when we are find out in the non-perfect square numbers between 1 and square of 2. Then we find that 1 multiply by 2 you will get 2 non-perfect square numbers here it is 2 and 3 so 2 multiply by 2 that is equals to 4 non-perfect here it is 5 5 multiply by 2 so you will get 10 non-perfect square number let's count 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 and 35. Count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It means that we can say that ki there are 2n non-perfect square numbers between the square of a number n and n plus 1. 
If you have to find out the non-perfect square numbers between n and n plus 1, we can go with the formula 2n. So, in this way, we have completed all the properties on square and square root. In our next video, we will see the exercise depends on these properties of square and square roots.